What is going on everybody? It is Bush Fishing. We're back in the shop and today we're going to be making a custom trim tilt harness for pretty much any outboard there is. Assuming that your trim pump has a green and a blue wire coming off of it, this will also work for stern drives, but I would be careful with this on stern drives because those trim pumps take higher amperage. But in today's video we're going to be focusing on outboard. So you're going to need two relays. These I got from Napa. They're part number AR272. They're five position which we'll get into that in a little bit. And then you're gonna need a three position momentary switch. A regular three position will work, but with the momentary, it automatically shuts itself off. So when you're trimming it up or down, it'll stop. Some other things you're gonna need are basic tools, wire stripper, crimper, stuff like that. And then obviously a wire in your terminals, which are easy to find and we'll get more into what exactly you need in a little bit. This video is gonna be kind of in depth. It's gonna tell you what's doing what and why it's doing it. And we're gonna give you a wiring diagram and explain everything through that. So you understand what's going on when it actually happens and it'll make it that much easier putting it together. But before we get into the video, if you guys want some sweet merch like this, First link down in the description. And if you guys are new here, I make outboard repair videos. We're gonna be moving into stern drive, stuff like that. But I also do fishing. So if there's anything that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe down below. Got a lot more coming this summer. So we're gonna start off this video with a wiring diagram and I'm gonna explain exactly how everything works and what wires are going where and what they're doing. So that way you can at least understand what's going on while we're doing it, not just following me in the video and not knowing what the hell you're doing. So let's get over to the notebook. All right. so. Hopefully you can read this legibly, but essentially this is what we got here. So this wiring diagram has the trim motor down here. Off the trim motor there's going to be two wires always. A blue wire and a green wire. The way that I remember this is blue sky up, so that's for going up with the trim, and then green grass down. So green would be going down. Now you see we've got our two relays here. So on a five position relay like this, I've got them labeled. There's pin 30, 87, 87A, 86, and 85. 85 and 86 are your trigger. So if you don't know how a relay works, when you give power and ground, it charges up this coil, which will move the relay over. So if you imagine a relay looking like this normally, when you charge up the coil, it'll close it and make contact. So both of these are normally resting on 87A, which is going to be ground. Ground straight to the battery. So both of these will connect and go into ground on the battery. The positive, however, is going to be two pins. It's going to be 86 and 87. So keep that in mind in a second. We're just going to focus on one side here. 85 is going to be going up to your switch. Now, on a switch like this, this has dual options on here. So just imagine we have these three pins on here. Middle one is going to be ground, so this isn't a power switch, it's going to be a ground switch. So this is coming from the battery, it's going to be a ground in, and then when you flip the switch, it'll make contact between whichever two pins, either up or down. So when it makes that contact, it's going to be closing this switch like that and letting ground through to 85. And since 86 is a power, that'll complete the circuit so that this coil will charge up and it'll switch over the relay. Now, since both of these are normally resting on ground, pin 30 to 87, a will be ground so one side will switch to power the other side won't do anything and it'll stay ground and that'll give you power and ground to your trim motor now it's the exact opposite for the other side if you flip the switch to down it'll make contact between these two pins you'll have ground here and then still power on 86 charge the coil close the circuit sorry charge the coil close the relay and then you'll have power on this side so pin 30 will go to pin 87 you'll get power directly from the battery power straight to the green wire on one side of the trim motor and the other side will be ground. So that's the theory of it. If you want to take a picture of this or make your own, I would recommend doing that because it makes it a lot easier, especially if you write the pin numbers down correctly. So switching over to our relay, on the relays you get a nice diagram on them. So it doesn't look exactly like how I've drawn it out, but you'll see pin 30, which will be going to the trim motor, 87A, which it normally rests on, which will be a ground, 87, which will be a power, and then 85 and 86 are your triggers. So when you flip the switch, power will come to 85 and then or sorry ground will come to 85 86 will already be grounded and on the bottom they're all labeled you might not be able to see it but when you have one in your hands you will so we have pin 30 85 and 86 which are on opposites and then we have 87 and 87a so that pretty much covers the theory of what we're doing let's get into making a harness all right so for the sake of the wire that i have here i'm going to be using blue for up and then brown for down Easy way to remember that is brown dirt grass down, 
that's just how I'm going to be doing it in the video. The other thing you're going to need are going to be these spade connectors. Female spade connectors. These are what's going to go on to the bottom of the relay. They do sell bases with these relays that make it much prettier and easier and they're actually mountable. For the sake of this video we're not, just so you can see how I'm connecting everything. We're going to switch over to the GoPro and I'm going to strip my wire, get my leads on. These two wires are going to be what's going to your actual trim pump. So we're going to start off with pin 30 which I'll bring the diagram out. But the first two wires we're doing are our output wires which are going to the trim pump. Alright so I'll be using this as my mat. We're going to grab our wire strippers and strip off about a quarter inch on each end. Not on each end but on one end. And if you'll notice, I'm using really thin wire. Just because of what I have, this isn't going in a boat. You're going to want to use 12 gauge for your output wires like this, and then 14 gauge or 16 gauge for your trigger. You can go even smaller, but again, female spade connector. Put it over the end. Make sure it's all the way in there. And I don't know where my pliers went, so we're going to be using this, but they're easy enough to squeeze. So, after you get your terminal crimped on, give it a pull test. Don't be afraid to squeeze the shit out of it. So pull test there, we will grab another one and do the same for the other wire. Obviously it's recommended that you use tinned marine grade wire and all of these connections, depending on where you're going to put it, you can either have these relays sitting in the cowling or you can have them on the boat. But when you butt splice these to your trim pump, you're going to want to use heat shrink butt connectors or solder with heat shrink on top. And I would always recommend marine heat shrink because it has the glue in it. So now we're going to grab our relays, pick which one you want to be down or up so in this case this relay is going to be up we're going to be looking for pin 30 on here so we'll bring it down to the bottom pin 30 is right here we are going to push it over and there's our output wire for up now we're going to grab the other relay same thing find pin 30 wherever it may be found it right there same thing push it in done make sure you stay organized keep your wires off to one side next thing that we're gonna do is our ground wire the next wire that we're gonna pull is gonna go to both relays and connect to one spot so you can either have the wires butt spliced and then have one lead going off to the battery or you can have two long leads coming from the relay going all the way down to the battery. The way that I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna butt splice them off each relay so we'll have the leads coming from each relay Butt splice them together, and then butt splice on the other end, one lead coming down to the battery. Okay, so over here, same thing on one end of them. You're going to be stripping off about a quarter inch. Boom and boom. Going to be grabbing female spade connectors. Put them on. Squish them down real good. Give them a pull test. Pull test. Same thing with the other one. Boom, pull test. So now, these two wires, which are our grounds, are going to go to pin 87A on both of them. So go grab each relay. Find pin 87A, which is the center for me, which will also most likely be the center for you. Push it on there on one, grab your other relay, center pin 87A, grab it, push it on. Okay, so now we're going to have our two relays sitting next to each other. These two are going to get connected. So what I like to do for this, if you're not soldering, or even if you are soldering, strip off a little more than you would normally need. So in this case, I'm getting about a half inch. Now what we're gonna do, put these two next to each other, give them the old bimini twist. I'm using a thin enough gauge wire that this is possible. You should be okay too. Just make sure you have the right size butt splice. Now we will grab our butt splice, put it over the one end, just like that. Crimp down the one end, give that a pull test. Now you're gonna take your extra wire. So this is the one that's gonna be going to the battery. Strip off your little bit. In this case, I'll just bend this one over and shove it in so it's a little tighter since we're using a bigger butt splice. Same thing, now you're gonna crimp down the other end. I'm using pretty shitty butt splices for this, just for the sake of the video. If I were actually doing it, I'd use heat shrink butt connector. Give that a pull test. So now, this lead is going to be going to the battery. This is going to be your only ground lead that's touching the battery. On this end, strip it off, you will grab your ring terminal. So for me, I don't have one that's big enough to go over a battery post. This might actually work, but in your case, you're going to be using one that's big enough to go over on a marine battery, on a little half inch terminal that you get. Actually, I'm going to put on another spade connector. So I I can use a little 12 volt battery to show you but in your case this is going to be a ring terminal to your 12 volt ground so that's ground side done and output side done okay so for this next section we're going to be doing the power side of it so pins 86 and 87 on each side are going to get daisy chained into one and then from there those two single output wires are going to get daisy chained into one that's going to go to the power terminal for this i would recommend having the one coming from the power terminal a thicker gauge wire 
and then into each two smaller gauge wires. What could be done is 86 is a small gauge wire going straight to the battery and then 87 which is going to be your main power source to pin 30 that would be a heavier gauge wire but it's really up to you what you want to do. They don't suck that much amperage where you're going to be creating a lot of resistance in there and you're going to be melting wires but you don't want to use something like 18 gauge wire for this. Okay, so we're going to start with two leads. These two these two are going to be similar length. They're going to go, one end is going to go to pin 87, another end is going to go to 86, and on the opposite side, they're going to connect, or just like we did before. Terminal. Okay, so with those two sides done, we're going to pick one relay. So I'm going to pick the down relay, and that's going to be pin 86 and 87. All right, so these are going to be pin 86 and 87 on one relay, so we will find 86 and 87. Not 87A, because that's hard to use, but just 87. Push that in. So now, we're going to strip the ends, the opposite ends off, doing a little more than normal, even them out, give them the old bimini twist. No, that's not actually called bimini twist, that's just what I call it. We're going to grab butt splice, boom, crimp down the one end. That's where I'm going to leave it for now. Now we're going to grab the other relay and do the exact same thing. Two similar length wires, strip off quarter inch for your terminal. Two female spade connectors, put them on, make sure they're all the way in. Give it a good healthy pinch, don't want that coming off. Okay, pull test, pull test. Now, opposite relay, same thing, you're going to be using pins 86 and 87. So look at the bottom of your relay, here's 86, boom, and 87, boom. Now, same thing, take your opposite ends, strip off a little more than you normally would, just like that, give it the old twist tie, you're closing up a bread bag, butt splice, slap that on there, crimp down the one end, pull test. Okay, so we have our two relays, we have these two ends, so essentially what we have here, 86 and 87 coming together, and now they need to come into one, which is going to come together into the power terminal. Of the battery so we will grab another hunk of wire we're gonna strip both ends a lot not a lot but half inch more than you normally would just like that one end is gonna go into one relay where we just have the two wires come down to one suppose this end didn't really have to be that long but as long as there's no exposed wire you're all right helps to have the marine connector with the heat shrink this will work so there's one same thing with the other one Strip both ends, just like that. Shove one end into the butt splice. Stop shaking so much. Just like that, crimp it down. So now, you're left with two single ends. Same thing here. These two we're gonna even out. Twist together. Yes, this is a lot of butt splices. It would be prettier and less loss, less resistance if we soldered them. Butt splice over the two leads. Boom. <sighs> just like that. And now from that end, we're gonna strip one end. Strip the one end, put it in the butt splice, crimp it down, and then on the other end, this is where you're going to put your terminal. So grab your ring terminal that fits over the battery. In my case, I'm using another one of these spades, just because I'm going to be using a little baby battery to show you that this works. And boom, power side is done. So now the last thing that we have on this is going to be 87A. Okay, so disregard what I said before, I don't know why I connected the two 85s together, but since you have the two separate wires, if you did what I did, 85 and 85 on each relay are going to be separate, they're going to be going to the switch. This end, which if you did what I did, you already have connected to the ground, this is also going to be going to the switch. So let me fix that mistake. Okay, so off of each relay, you're going to have your 85 wire on each end. Strip off just a little bit on each. I'm going to be using, I actually don't know the name of it, I think it's just a male disconnect. This type of terminal, which is going to go onto the switch. So each end, crimp this on, those are stiffer. Same thing with the other relay, same thing with the opposite side. Okay, so with that done, you're going to find which relay is doing what. This relay is going to be our up relay, so this one's going to go to up on the switch. So up on the switch, we're going to designate to this side. We're going to loosen up this screw a little bit if you're using the same terminals as I am. 85 wire is going to go up to our switch, and we're going to tighten the screw on top of it. That's our up relay done. Now we're going to take the other relay, 85 wire, same thing on the bottom. Put it in there. Tighten the screw on top of it so it doesn't come out. All right, the last thing that we need is that ground wire that we already have connected to a ground. We're gonna do the same thing, strip off a little bit. This is male disconnect 
forgive me, I don't know the name, but it's that same deal there. Yeah, squeeze that baby down. Fucking make sure that it's squeezed down. And lastly, this wire is gonna go to the center of our switch. All right, so with all that connected, we're gonna add some zip ties just to clean up some wiring. Like I said before, heat shrink. I forgot what it's called now, but the wrap for it, heat wrap, something to keep these wires protected because especially if you're using Harbor Freight wires, they will melt. Custom trim tail harness, two relays, three position switch. That's gonna fall. All right, so hopefully I just played some clips. That is what you are left with. It's a trim tilt harness for your outboard. Now, sorry for the confusion on pin 85. Apparently I messed that up, but once we got that straightened out, everything works great. I got the videos of it working. Hopefully this will work for your outboard. That was the goal here, so you don't have to go out and buy whatever PRP harness or depending on what year it is, find something on eBay for it. One thing to keep in mind is that what I just showed you isn't fused. Obviously, you always want to have a fuse. Depending on the gauge wire you have is how you're going to pick your fuse. There's math on it on the length of the wire, how much resistance it's going to build after a given amount of amperage. You would have to find out how much amperage your trim pump holds under load. I would say if you're using 12 gauge wire, put a 10 15 amp fuse on it see what works see where it blows you shouldn't be melting wires at any point but just to be safe always have a fuse on there i will put part numbers down in the description for the fuses that i used fuses for the relays that i used jesus well yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you did make sure to leave a like comment subscribe if you have any questions, make sure to comment because I always answer my comments and hopefully that'll get you helped out and get you in your outboard working. Once again, if you guys want any of this bush fishing merch, first link down in the description. We've got a lot more outboard repair videos coming, a lot more fishing videos, so make sure that you are subscribed. Hopefully this helped and I will see you guys in the next one.